Turn with me in your Bibles to Haggai. Haggai chapter number one. Verse number 13. We'll be focusing there on the latter part of that scripture. Appreciate everyone being here this morning. Well, there are several of us sick this morning. We'll keep it in mind. Be grateful for that. The Bible says, Then, Hag then spoke Haggai, the Lord's messenger. In the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. I am with you, saith the Lord. Amen. Uh, let me just give you a little bit of the background of uh, the, the life of, of, of a pastor. And, and, and this week, uh, it's exciting. There was a birth, and so we were, we were allowed to be in uh, on that of hearing of, of, of the birth of a newborn child, and that's wonderful. And uh, then there was that of people being sick, some being in the hospital, and, and uh, uh, you know, doing our best to follow up and connect with all those people not feeling well. So a birth and sickness, and an opportunity to be uh, part of a wedding this week and uh, be able to share in that which God has ordained in marriage. So that's a wonderful time to be involved in that. Uh, messages, uh, phone calls from folks to different individuals living on limited time and knowing that there could possibly be and there would be hours for some. The, the balancing just of life, you're hearing people share their balancing. Uh, the news of one of my classmates is, is uh, a late teenage daughter was killed in a car accident. And uh, so there's all kinds of ingredients to life, isn't there? You know, good, there's bad, there's that that brings tears of joy, and there's that that brings tears of sorrow. I don't know, there's nothing like holding a newborn baby and seeing the way that God forms it and fashions it uh, brings tears to your eyes. And there's something special about that beautiful bride walking down the aisle that, you know, brings tears of, uh, of just excitement and joy, a spectacular moment uh, uh, that you get to, uh, to witness and be with Brother Wally. And, but, you know, unfortunately, when folks pass away or when folks are given bad news or you find that sometimes folks are having a hard time balancing all the responsibilities and the difficulties of life. And so there's a mixed bag of everything, but, but there's one thing that is certainly true about all these situations is that God is with each and every one of us. He's with every one of us no matter what we go through. And so that's exciting. And all the laughter. I love the laughter of life. In fact, I want more of it. And I try to find that, uh, that, that laughter. Every day my girls bring me laughter. You know, funny things that they do and say. And the joy of seeing them. And my wife, she brings me joy and laugh. Seeing you brings a smile to my face. And we can connect again. And, and, and uh, we can share in, in life's things. It's a joyous occasion. Uh, uh, Heather made me laugh this morning. I, I, I remember the very first time Heather, she was uh, uh, jumping on the bed. And I, I was watching her jump on the bed. And she fell off the bed. And it wasn't my fault, you know. And so here this four year old, she looks at me and said, I'm telling my name all of you. <laughs> so I reminded her of that this morning. And she said, And she got on to you. You deserved it. <laughs> she didn't get on to me. <laughs> but it was humorous, right? So life is full of humor. And I, I, I appreciate that. We look for that. But unfortunately, there are some struggles and there are some tears. And things aren't always humorous, but God is with us. May I share some life situations? Can I take the Bible for a few moments and bring it to modern day and then we'll look at it? Can I bring some terminology to things that will change our viewpoint and our vernacular of situations? Can I talk about a middle-aged man who's having a rough time? His mother and his father, they're gone. 
He is feeling that of, of being between generations. He misses them. He's having problems with his teenage children. Economic problems uh, are, are severe. Shortages uh, are there. It seems like uh, every time he accomplishes something, someone comes along and pulls all the recognition from him. And, and the carpet kind of goes out from underneath his feet. That's real life. And then, if I could bring our attention to that of a young man who's away from home, he knows that uh, he has family members that are out to kill him, and uh, they're out to get him, and uh, he, he's, he's run away, he finds himself alone, he finds himself at places that he's never been before, and his future just looks grim. Modern day circumstances for various people. And then we look and, uh, 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 and, and it's life, and, and I can say, but there are four words that changes everything for him, that God is with him. Amen. It can change his whole situation. We look and we find that there's uh, an employee, and, and they're doing their very best, and they're excelling, but, but, but their employer is, is, is sexually harassing them. He finds that he's faithful in all that he does, but he finds that tables are turned and uh, the charges are brought against him for what his employer is doing. And now he finds himself in prison for an unjust uh, cause. And, and it's not his fault, but he finds himself there. But there are four words that changes everything for him. That God is with him. Praise God. God is with him. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve to be there. And, and then there's another man that he's just lost his best friend, his mentor, and he's called to take his place. He's filled with grief. He, 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 he knows that the death of his friend is, is hurting his heart. And how could he ever replace him? How could he ever handle such responsibility? He was simply the prodigy. He, his mentor is gone, and he feels unworthy, and he feels just like he doesn't have the tools, the knowledge, the equipment to do what has been granted and given him as he's waiting through all of his own grief and all of his own stuff. But four words changes the situation. That God is with him. We look and we find that there is an entire nation that is bouncing back after war and exile is brought upon them. And they're in the middle of reconstruction. The people's priorities become so mixed up. The situation seems to be downhill. Uh, will they ever come back to where they want to be? They're filled with discouragement. Is there really a future ahead for them? And so uh, I hear as a leader, and he's wondering, I hope that I can turn things around. Is it possible? <coughs> But four words changes everything. God says, I am with you. We look and there's a young lady who comes from a poor family and she's engaged to get married. She has very modest hopes, but Eli, she doesn't really have a diary, she doesn't really have a lot. And she finds herself to be with child and what this man really want her. Will he trust her? Will he love her? Can she depend upon God? Can she put her future in the way of hope and excitement? But four words changes everything. God said, I am with you. Four words changed the situations for these people. They were four simple words, and each word only contains one syllable, but yet these four words, they change everything. When we know that God has spoken to our heart, I am with you. So I feel like I just want God in the course of this message. It won't be eloquent. It won't be something extreme. 
But if the presence of the Holy Ghost can just emboss upon your mind and your heart these words today, that I am with you. What changes when, 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 when we're given marriage and we know that before us it's going to be good times and bad times? How will we endure? How will we weather? Amen. Knowing that God is with us. I want to tell you a true story this morning. I was visiting with a patient in, in the past weeks. And uh, one of my greatest things is, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Bottom line, no matter how sick you are, no matter what your outlook is, uh, do, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Are you saved? What's your faith like? What's your dependence in God? So I begin to ask this elderly man, hey, in a situation, I said, could you tell me a little bit about you, your relationship with God? Could you tell me a little bit about your faith? How is your faith? And he looked and he smiled at me and he said, my faith is wonderful. All of a sudden, he said, I need to share a story with you. He said, my faith has been strong since I was a young man. He said, I was drafted into World War II. Yeah, I was part of the Battle of the Bulge. He said, I was just a young man, and me and my friend, uh, all the other guys, they smoked cigarettes, and they would put them in their pocket. He said, but me and my friend, we didn't smoke, and so we took a, a little Bible, a little New Testament, and we'd wrap it up in wax paper to protect it, and we slipped it in our pocket. He said, when we would have time, downtime, we would slip it out of that wax paper, and we would read it. He said, one day, my friend and I, we were walking, and he, and he called his friend by name. I don't remember his friend's name uh, right now, and that doesn't matter. He said, my friend was a little bit ahead of me walking, and he said, all of a sudden, I noticed him come back about 20 feet, and it was the oddest thing. He said, what happened? He said, I'm not sure. He said, in that moment, he said, he reached into his pocket. He had his Bible in there, and it's wax paper, and he had a little German knife that, that had a little knife, a fork, and a spoon on it. He said, he began to pull that out, and he said, somewhere in odds between that knife and the Bible, he said, and he pulled it out, and all of a sudden, a bullet dropped. He said, in that moment, he said, God showed me that he was God and that I could trust in him with anything that his word says because his word is protection. His word is life. Brother and sister, I'm not talking about someone who told a story, told a story, told a story. I'm talking about an eyewitness to the presence of God, of God's word protecting because God said, I am with you, whether you're at home or whether you're at war, whether you're in sickness, whether you're in health, I am with you. And no matter what your face, as diverse as your situation may be, I am with you. And so this morning I pray that God would whisper to your heart in the middle of your life that He is with you. Whether it's a good time, and boy, I want God with me in the good times. Amen. Or whether it's a struggle right now in your life, to just have God confirm that I am with you. Four words. I am with you. We have to understand that life is but a vapor. It appears for a moment and then it vanishes. <clears throat> and so the, the years seem to pass with supersonic speed. And sometimes we really we wonder what does our lives mean? But I need to tell you that the promise is not. God says, I am with you. And if we will hear him whisper that promise to us this morning, it will change everything. The harshest of situations have to succumb when God says, I am with you. Four words that changed everything for a middle-aged man. His name was Isaac. Four words that changed everything for a runaway man. His name was Jacob. Four words that changed everything for a wrongly imprisoned Joseph. Four words that changed everything for a very timid and uh, 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 an aged 80-year-old man, Moses. And then for Joshua, 
who had to fill the shoes of Moses, and then for Gideon, who was scared like a rabbit, but God made him a mighty man of valor to lead his people. I have four simple words that are one syllable each. It can be the deciding difference for us in any situation, knowing that God is with you. And for Mary, a young lady who's scared for her life and uncertain about her future, four words changed everything. I am with you. Let's consider for a moment Isaac. Isaac, here he is. He's in his middle years. He's the son of Abraham and Sarah, who was born in their late years. And he loves his wife, Rebecca. And he has two sons, Esau and Jacob. But there's tension in their home. And it seems like Isaac, he loves to favor his son, who is, is a real sportsman, uh, Esau. And Rebecca, she seems to prefer her grainy son, uh, Jacob. And so meanwhile, famine uh, uh, begins to consume the land, causing serious uh, shortages. And Isaac finds himself uh, uh, forced to move to another region, a land where the, the Philistines are. And so in many ways, Isaac is like that middle-aged man who's trying to balance out two generations. His parents are God. He's trying to take care of his next generation. And he's feeling the family stress and economic conditions while they're affecting him. And, and in the middle of this, uh, he just finds himself uh, frustrated and, and discouraged. Really, it sounds like an ideal situation for a lot of people, even today. But Isaac gets a promise from God. And although we find that he is rich and God changes things, God speaks to him and he says, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid. I am with you. And I will bless you. Life can be difficult. That another generation. And the responsibilities of attending to parents or maybe parents not being there we like them. Balancing out family, situations with family. Struggling economically to provide, meet ends meet, provide for both generations and yourself. But God comes by and says, I was a God of your Father. And I'm the God of you. And I will be with you. And I will bless you. Listen, I'm not looking for blessing to be that of a million bucks in the bank account. I'm looking for God to bless that His promises are there and He's going to keep and sustain and help us no matter what we go through. I am with you. It changes everything. So we see Isaac and then we look at his son Jacob. Jacob, he was a man who was on the run and, and uh, we find that that, that he has connived his brother's birthright, he connives his brother's blessing, and so he escapes because family situations are harsh. And, you know, folks aren't feeling so good among themselves, brothers. In fact, his brother hates him and despises him and really wants to kill him. You know, I found that families all have their dynamics, don't they? There can be different situations and different needs. And so, no matter what your situation and what your need, we find that, that Jacob comes to a place uh, that, that is called certain. He comes to Bethel, the house of God, and there he wrestles with the angel of the Lord. Now, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And so he hears the voice of the Lord in the situation. And God speaks to him in Genesis 28, 15. And he says, I am with you. And I will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. And I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised in you. Amen. No matter what your family situation is. No matter if you're feeling lonely or by yourself. Amen. The word that you need to hear from God is this. Is that. I am with you. It changes everything. And so this man, can you imagine Sister Tina 
what it must be like when he's about to see his brother. You know, I, I imagine, Brother Josh, that there is some anxiety, knowing that God is there, but still within himself. And he's anxious, Sister Rachel, but he knows that God has made a promise that I am with you. He has wrestled with God, and God has given him an answer that has changed his life, and changed his circumstance, that I am with you. Listen, God can change your life. God can change your circumstance. The four little words with one single. I am with you. Listen to me this morning. Every person that has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, God has a word for you. I am with you. Yeah. It can change your present condition. God was with him. Through all of the sin, through all of his mistake, through all of the sorrow, Jacob knows one thing for certain that God has touched me and changed me. And he's promised to be with me. And then you find that of Joseph. His story is familiar to most of us. Betrayed by his siblings. Sent to Potiphar's house. And Mrs. Potiphar gives wrong accusations against him. She was making advances on him and turns the table and says he was making advances on her. So he finds himself in prison and wrongfully done. And so when the Lord speaks to Joseph, the Bible says this about Joseph, that the Lord was with Joseph and the Lord prospered Joseph. There was something Joseph knew when he was sold as a slave. There was something that he knew when he was portrayed in Potiphar's house. Uh, Brother Craig, he knew something when he was in the prison that God is with me. And so through it all, God gave him success in whatever he did. I want to tell you something. Listen to me. There may be some of you in here that you have been unjustly done. Someone may have done something to you, said something to you, uh, acted inappropriately in some way to you. But I want to tell you that God has some words for you today. Amen. That He is with you. Don't waste your energy hating someone else, despising someone else, thinking that you've been unjustly done. Amen. Know that God is with you. You don't need anybody else as long as God is on your side. Amen. Joseph refused refused to be the victim. He said, I know that God has a plan for my life, and this is just one step getting me closer to where I need to be. So your job situation, your family situation, uh, your, your situation uh, with others, amen, know this, that God is with you. God's with you. He was willing to let go of what Mrs. Potiphar has done. He said, you meant for that. But what, God, what you meant for that, God's going to use for you. <laughs> you ever know when someone does you wrong, it hurts, doesn't it? They, 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 they paint you out in a bad way. And they do whatever they can do to pull the rug out from underneath you, step on you, push you down. They do whatever they can do. But know this, child of God, what they need for harm. God can use for you. God can use for you. Because this is the promise you have. God is with you. Moses, 80 years old. Can you imagine? 80 years old. Some of you are thinking about retiring. I'm sure Moses was too. But God had different plans. God found him where he was taking care of his father-in-law's sheep 40 years. And uh, you know, uh, it took Moses 40 years, Brother Josh, to learn the lesson of patience. But God knew what he was up to. And so uh, God said, okay, I, I, Moses, you thought you were by yourself taking care of the sheep and that everyone in front. But I knew where you were. 
I've not left you. I've not forgotten you. I was there when your, your, your mother placed you in the river. I was there when Potiphar's wife uh, got you, uh, not uh, Pharaoh's daughter grabbed you out. I, I knew all about you. I had plans for you. And even when you tried to do things your own way, messed it up and you took off fleet, I was with you. I was working in your life. Listen, God's been working in my life. He didn't seem like he's quiet. But God, I have the speech impediment. And God, I'm really a shy person. It's really not. But Moses, you tell them that the I am, that the I am have sent you. And I am with you. God may have placed you somewhere and you may think this is how it is and I feel like my life's kind of been on the back burner. You don't think that God has not orchestrated everything about your life, child of God, and He's not done with you. And whatever He calls you to do, you can do it. Because He is with you. Joshua, after the death of the Moses, Israelites were standing on the border of the Promised Land. He had enormous challenges before him. Can I go on without my friend, without my mentor? Hey, listen, when you've lost someone that is close to you, you understand the grieving process. I don't feel like going on. I feel like staying here. How can I? How could I possibly ever take the place of Moses? Will I ever be able to conquer these well-armed, fortified cities? And all of a sudden, God speaks to Joshua and he says, no one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Joshua heard some words, amen, that he needed to hear that changed the whole concept of everything that he was thinking and feeling. Oh, God is with me, so I'm able to do it. God will never leave me. Amen. And I'm going to tell you this morning, God will never leave you. How can I do this? Because God is with me. God is with you. All things are possible. Gideon, your army is now with 300. How will you ever have victory? God spoke to him and said, Gideon, I'm with you. When we speak to ourselves that God is with us, and when God speaks to us that I am with the vitality that begins to rise up, the confidence of knowing that no matter what the obstacle, we can overcome. And lastly this morning, what about that young lady named Mary? Four words changed everything. God just spoke to me, well, what about Joseph? We find that the angel ministers to Joseph there in Matthew chapter number one. He says, you shall call his name Jesus. It goes on down to say that that this is that which was prophesied, that he shall be Emmanuel. What? God is with you. Joseph, no way, no need to be afraid. Mary, no need to be afraid because Emmanuel is here. God is with you. That's have some staggering, overwhelming, very confident information to tell you this morning. That when Jesus came, he had no intentions of ever leaving. Because when he came, he finished the work upon the cross. And he said this, he said, I am with you always. In Matthew 28, verse number 20, he said, Behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus wants you to know that he is with you. Amen. To the work of the Holy Ghost this morning, the power of the work of the cross. God is with you. So when you get a telephone call that's overwhelming, God is with you. When your checkbook isn't balancing out, God is with you. When family situations aren't going the way that you want them to go, God is with you. When you feel like you've been sitting on the back burner, amen, wondering what's going on in your life, God is with you. When God calls you to do something and you feel inadequate, God is you. When you are grieving, God is with you. Uh, for the joys of life, for the sorrows 
of life, and through the easy times, but through the challenges, one thing we need to know is God is with us. Sister Holly, if you come to the piano this morning. Let me just share with you in these closing moments. I probably said it before, but I was challenged by someone this week. Listen, I wasn't worried about the end of the world happening yesterday. Were you? No. No. Because the Bible tells me that no man knows the day of the hour. So when they begin to